the body and your soul was waiting for permission from Allah, do I return or does he remain dead? What decision did you have in that process? You had no decision whatsoever. Your soul was waiting for permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do I return or not? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his rahmah, from his mercy, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted your soul permission to return back to your body and then you wake up in the morning and how do we pay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How do we thank him subhanahu wa ta'ala? One of the scholars, he was saying something interesting. He said, imagine you woke up this morning. Imagine you woke up this morning. And all that you had is whatever you thanked Allah for yesterday. Imagine this morning when you woke up. When you woke up in the morning, all that you had, the only possessions that you had is whatever you thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for yesterday. Now you be honest. What did you thank Allah for yesterday? What did you thank Allah for yesterday? We've become ungrateful people. My eyes are always over the fence. I'm always looking at that which I don't have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so much. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and I more than you could ever fathom in your life. And yet still, still ungrateful towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I still don't have time for Allah. I still don't have time for my deen. I still have time to sit down and belittle the sunnah and laugh and joke and giggle about this, that and the other when it comes to my deen. Ungrateful people is what we've become. For someone who pays you a measly wage, a measly wage of whatever it is, what's the current wage a week here? What, a thousand pounds? No? It's two, two, uh, how much? How much? A week. That's what you earn. Are you serious? For 250 pounds a week, the masses, wallahi, the masses, we've become slaves to our bosses. Slaves. Be there at 7, you're there at 6.50 because you want to show them, hey, I'm not like the rest. Be there at 4 o'clock in the morning, no problems. No matter what your boss asks you for, you're there and you're happy to do it. For a measly £250 a week. 8 hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. Wallahi, I know people that do 16 hours a day. For what? For a couple of hundred pounds. Yet the king of kings, the one that gave you your life, the one that gave you your soul, the one that gave you your body, the one that gave you eyes to see, the one that gave you ears to hear with, the one that, subhanAllah, the one that gave you everything that you possess, the one that gave you your father, your mother, your deen, your iman, your tawheed, the one that gave you everything, the one that allows you to wake up in the morning, to sleep at night, the one that, the one that your heart seeks permission from, every time your heart beats, it seeks permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He grants it, and He's never let you down once. Allah has never let you down once. The one that gives you all this, you don't have time to perform your five daily prayers. But the one that gives me three, four hundred pounds a week, I'm ready to do the impossible for him. I'm ready to drive an hour, sometimes two hours in peak hour traffic, just to get there because he gives me three, four hundred pounds. But the one that created the heavens and the earth, the one that gave me everything that I have, I don't have 20 minutes in a day. I don't have 20 minutes in a day to perform my prayers. Because the truth is, my brothers, you and I have been fooled to believe that I still have a long life. That maybe I'm not the best Muslim right now. But we have time, brother. Inshallah. Wallahi, my intention is there, brother. You don't know what's in my heart. And then we all become scholars on the issue, yeah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows in one, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in my heart. Yeah, nifak, hypocrisy. That's what it is. That's what it is. My brothers, every single one of you is going to die. And no one knows when his time is. I ask you sincerely. Wallahi, I ask you sincerely, what have you prepared? What have you prepared? Why is it that we don't look around? Why is it that we don't go to the cemetery and look? 
Look and see the ages. You know, there used to be a time in my life, there used to be a time in my life, yeah, when death belonged to, you know, Abu Ali and Abu Ahmad, who's 70, 80 years old, been to Hajj, and, and, you know, when I was growing up as a young boy, that's who death belonged to. But now, now, by Allah, almost 70% of the people who die in Sydney, I don't know what the stats are here, yeah, are under the age of 40. Young boys and young girls, 20 years old and 30 years old and 18 years old and 16 years old, nothing wrong with them. You know, I know of over four, you know, at least of four different cases back home in Sydney, brothers playing football. They're playing football, there's nothing wrong with him. One of them kicked the goal and was doing a celebration for the goal, he fell to the floor, had a heart attack and died. Other one was 17 years old. They're playing some football. Young boys kicking a ball, having some fun. <clears throat> Fell to the floor, never ever got back up. 18 year old boy back home in Sydney. Him and his cousin going for a drive. He had a, he had a fancy car. They got to a set of lights. As you do, you drag race. Just a bit of fun. One thing led to another, the brother lost control, his car flipped over, killed him instantly. No one knows when his time is, my brothers. You don't know when you're going. But what's more important than that is how are you going? How will you stand before Allah? What life are we living now? I ask you sincerely, is any one of you here, and there's always some cowboy, so please just keep your hand down, yeah? <laughs> Honestly, sincerely, are you ready to meet Allah? Are you ready to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are we doing with our lives? What are we doing with our time? Why is it that we're so busy and we're so occupied that I have time for anything and everything except when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And you know, my brothers, you know, this is, this is something I share wherever I go. Don't, don't you dare think, don't you dare for a moment think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in need of anyone here. Because there's always, you know, there's, 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 this, there's this mentality now, yeah, with the dons. That listen, bro, don't, 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 don't come to me with your deen, preaching your this, that and the other, trying to tell me what I need to do and what I don't need to do. I'm a big boy, I know what to do, you know, and I can sort myself out. Arrogance with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That listen, I don't need this deen and this namaz business of yours, you know, let me do my thing. But let me tell you something, yeah? Whether you like it or not, whether it fits well with you, it gels, it works with you, it doesn't matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the king, is the malik. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not in need of you and I. Not in need. The Prophet of Allah in the Sahih Hadith sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was sitting with the Sahaba, he says to them, أطت السماء وحق لها أن طائت أطت السماء وحق لها أن طائت Forgive me my brothers, but you know sometimes, and I'm sure you've heard the Hadith, but sometimes you really need to start living the hadith. The Prophet of Allah sitting with the greatest ummah that ever walked the earth. Sitting with the sahaba. And this isn't a means of, you know what, I'm not praising them because, you know, our mashayikh tell us to praise them. Allah praised them in Quran. Allah testified. Allah praised them in Quran and said, I am pleased with them and they are pleased with me. The greatest ummah that ever walked the earth were the sahaba. And yet the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaking to them, he says to them in the Sahih Hadith, he says to them, you know, I see what you don't see, and I hear what you don't hear. He says to them, verily the heavens have squeaked, and they have every right to squeak. The heavens have squeaked. You know, sometimes when you put a lot of weight onto something, that thing starts giving way, starts making noises, it can no longer carry the load. The Prophet of Allah is telling the Sahaba that the heavens have squeaked and they have every right to squeak. The Prophet of Allah says to the Sahaba, he says, there isn't room in all the heavens, there isn't room for four fingers except there is an angel in prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
and some little gangster here in London thinks that Allah needs him or needs his money. There isn't room for four fingers in all the heavens and the earth, except there is an angel in prostration to Allah. There are angels from the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates them, to the day that they stand before Allah on the day of rest, one continuous sajda. I'm telling you, from the moment they were created, until the moment that they, one continuous sajda. I'm not telling you that they went and came and had, no, no, one continuous sajda. And yet when they stand before Allah, they say, oh Allah, forgive us. For we did not give haq to your ibadah. We didn't do justice to your worship. And I have some little bad boy here who thinks, yeah, man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs my money, bro. Every time I go to the masjid, there's always a fundraiser, you know, and they always come knocking on my door. Keep your money, bro. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, you know, you know, in the hadith could see, yeah, in the hadith could see the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's telling us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, says, Ya ibadi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and please try to comprehend, really try to comprehend. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ibadi, O oh my slaves, O oh my slaves, the human of you and the jinn of you, the Muslim and the non-Muslim, irrelevant, all of you collectively. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if all of you were together collectively, all, with the exception of no one, if all of you were together collectively, and worship me, and worship me, and worship me, until you all become like the most pure heart amongst you. He says, this does not increase my greatness in any way, shape, or form. And the opposite is true. The opposite is true. If all of us now, if all of us were to come together and sin, and sin, and do drugs, and do alcohol, and prostitution, and this, that, and the other, and run the biggest muck, Run the biggest muck in downtown London and do whatever you please. Free, free ticket. Run a muck and do whatever you want. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if all of you, not some of you, if all of you, if all of my creation got together and all of you sinned and sinned until you became like the most criminal heart amongst you. He says, this doesn't take anything away from my mulk in any way, shape or form. Allah doesn't need you and I. 